Hey guys, this is Kevin from jazzham.com. Jazzham.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. We offer the lowest prices anywhere online and if you'd like to know the price of a watch, simply click on the links in the description below. If you enjoy our videos, we would greatly appreciate if you would buy a watch from jazzham.com once in a while. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into our comparison today. Today we'll be doing a comparison between the Rolex No Date Submariner here on my left, reference number 114060, versus the Rolex Deep Sea newly updated uh, in the Basel 2018 show. Here on my right, reference number 126660. We'll be going over the dial, bezel, case, crown, bracelet, clasp, and we'll talk about the movements towards the end of the video. Okay, as you can see, both of them are sports, are sports pieces, and that's easily easily known just by the dial, uh, the dial structure, which is the maxi dial, the circular hour markers with index six and nine, and the triangular twelve o'clock position hour markers, all fashioned in eighteen karat white gold to, to prevent any tarnishing. Similar style of hands, which are the Mercedes hour hands, the minute hand, uh, the minute and uh, hour hand with the. Uh, our markers are all luminescent with a highly legible chromolite display along with a blue luminescence, meaning it will glow in the dark with a blue luminescence for up to eight hours. So easy, uh, high visibility in the day and at night as well. And that makes sense as these both are divers watches. You want to be able to still see the time underwater as well. So the luminosity will, sh will shine uh, to be legible while diving as well. Of course, as I stated, the left is a no date submar uh, no date submariner, meaning there's no date at the three o'clock position. Instead, we just have a simple index indency. Whereas the deep sea, we do have the index or not the index, but the date window at the three o'clock position. Typically for sports pieces, there is a Cyclops lens on top of the Sapphire Crystal, but it is neither for both of these watches as this No Date Submariner has no date. And the Deep Sea, the Sapphire thickness, or the Sapphire Crystal thickness is actually very thick. It's about 5.5 millimeters thick, uh, which sort of adds, which sort of does the magnification on its own because of that thickness. One of the main differences is that we do see that the Deep Sea has the helium escape valve ring lock system around the edge of the dial. And I'll explain more about that later when we get to the case. Otherwise, there's uh, the only major, uh, the only major difference, or not even major. I apologize. The only minor difference that we see here is that at the six o'clock position, uh, six o'clock position, you'll see the Swiss made, uh, Swiss made text at the bottom right underneath the hour marker, and that's actually. Uh, that's actually the only change really they added a crown logo between it on the deep sea um, the submariner does not have that another thing to another thing I did forget to mention is that for the minute and the second hand for both watches um, the deep sea has been updated for a one millimeter length increase for the second hand and the minute hand and that's to match the outer indices as you can see from the no date submariner you see the sort of a spacing between it doesn't really line up exactly the deep sea has that update where the hand hand extends exactly at the edge of the outer indices to make a nice uh, streamlined look all right moving on to the bezel now so for the bezel we have the same same style bezel, which is a unidirectional rotatable 60 minute graduated scratch resistant Cerachrome bezel, which Cerachrome being Rolex's fancy way of saying ceramic bezel. It's the numerals and gradations are coated in a platinum to match with that stainless steel look overall with the uh, outer, the rigidness of the outer portion of the bezel and the stainless steel case. But specifically for the difference between the two bezels, uh, simply it's just the indices that are marked. So for the no date submariner, you can see that it's the indices are marked up to the 15 minute mark. Each indice is a five minute, uh, large indice is a five minute increment. Uh, the Arabic numerals being 10, min, uh, 10 minute increment, uh, 10 minute increments. So you can see the submariner, submariner no date. Uh, only has the indices to the 15, whereas the deep sea has it all the way around, even if it's just smaller indices as it gets farther. As I said, the bezel is used to track elapsed time. You can see how that works in a, their own standalone videos. We do have videos on both of these watches by themselves, so you can take a look about uh, take a look on the bezel function. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and move on to the case now. 
So case size is gonna be different case sizes for the no date submariner. We got a 40 millimeter case size, which is from my index finger to my thumb here, 40 millimeters in diameter. Whereas the deep sea is a four, uh, 44 millimeters in diameter, so index finger to my thumb here, 44 millimeters in diameter, so four, milli uh, four millimeters bigger than the no date submariner. Also, the size of the the size of the watch, the profile, is going to be vastly different as well. So, for the no date sub, it almost looks like it's two uh, two of these submariners stacked on top of each other just to make that thickness of that deep sea casing. The no date submariner runs at a 12 point uh, 12 and a half millimeters thickness, whereas the deep sea is a 17.7 millimeters thickness, so quite large. Uh, the Submariner will fit under its suitcase dress cuffs very nicely, but the deep sea will not. It will be a uh, very bold look on your wrist as it does stand out much more higher on the wrist. And I did mention that I would be mentioning about the ring lock. As you can see, the side of the case on the deep sea has this little circular indency or circular marker, and that's actually part of the helium escape valve. Um, so basically, for the Submariner, you'll be using the Submariner. You'll be using it to dive for a water resistance of about 300 meters or 1,000 feet. Whereas the deep sea is more of a professional diver's watch. It goes down to about 3,900 meters or 12,800 feet, and going down that low into the uh, into the ocean or wherever you're wherever you're diving, well, you have to come up through a depressurization chamber. And that depressurization chamber has a mixture of gases that help depressurize uh, depressurize the room you're in, and one of those gases is helium and helium does get into the watches in that when you're in the chamber and it can actually pop the crystal off just due to the pressure buildup in the watch and that's where the Rolex got the idea of the helium escape valve is that once it reaches a certain bar of pressure uh, it actually just opens up and lets that gas back out so nift so cool little feature there um, but as you can see same style of high polish that matches with the size of the bracelet and as I show you the other side, same here as well. Of course, larger crown for the larger case and larger crown protectors. A little bit more narrow, narrower crown protectors on the deep sea, as you can see. Uh, Post to submariner, submariner is more is a little bit larger width-wise compared to the deep sea. Moving on to the crown now, both have the same style crown, which is a triple lock, triple waterproofness system. It's a screw down, they are both screw down crowns. And I'll show you the functions on the deep sea because the Submariner is just very simple. So for the deep sea, you just simply unwind counterclockwise as shown. This is how it works for the Submariner as well. And it's first position is where you can wind the watch. About 15, 20 winds is all you need to get the watch started once more. Pulling the crown out to the next position will allow you to adjust the date instantaneously. This function obviously will be missing on the no date submariner. And you can see how easy it is to change through the dates. Now on the final position for either the deep sea or the submariner, they're both going to have the function of stopping the second hand. As you can see, the second hand has to stop moving and it allows for precise time settings such as to an atomic clock online. You can set it down to the exact seconds and you can also adjust the hands bi-directionally to set the time however you like. Pressing the crown back in, we'll start that second hand once more. And once again, always make sure to screw the crown nice and tight in against the case as you want to keep your watches nice and protected bet uh, between the crown protectors and ha keeping that water resistance that I mentioned, which for the Submariner was uh, uh, 300 meters or 1,000 feet and the deep sea was uh, 3,900 3, 3, meters or 12,800 feet. And that's actually located at this 6 o'clock position of the watch as well in the subtext. You can see right underneath the name. There's a water resistance. All right, so let's go ahead and move. And uh, before we move on to the bracelet, actually, one last thing I want to mention about the case is that from this side profile of the case, you can see that the lugs are actually smaller on the deep sea compared to the Submariner. And that's actually one of the other updates they, they did with the deep sea is that they've shortened, they've uh, narrowed the lugs down and actually added the thickness of the lug, one millimeter, into the center of the oyster bracelet. You can now see that the center links are much larger, the center link is much larger than on the Submariner. And then you see the lugs are much, are smaller in the deep sea, but larger on the Submariner. And the reason for that is, can you can you imagine having the Submariner bracelet on that deep sea? That's pretty much what was going on in the previous model. So you had this mismatch of uh, mismatch of shapes when wearing the Submariner Submariner in the deep sea. 
uh, rather when you're wearing the deep sea because it would had a smaller bracelet and a large large case but now the proportions fit very nicely as you can see frontal wise it's just nice smooth a large case into a great tapering into the bracelet but both of these watches do have the same style bracelet which is the oyster bracelet as we move through you can see patterning is the same throughout for the clasp same style clasp which is a flip lock uh, flip lock um, safety folding oyster lock uh, these two these two class are pretty much the same uh, in regards to functions and whatnot, but there is one small difference between the two and I'll actually show you that now. So we're gonna go ahead and open up these bracelets. So Submariner, there's the foot, there's a lock, safety folding lock. So there's a lock that sits on top of that folding oyster that opens up to reveal these nicely high polished class blades. Okay, and the differences, I put down the Submariner. We're gonna go look, take a look at this all right, I put down DC, we're gonna look at Submariner first. So we're gonna go ahead and pull 45 degree angle on the Submariner's bracelet at the class area. And you can see that I can adjust the bracelet inward or outward using the glide lock extension system, which is these little rivets behind the behind a class, which allows for uh, adjustments of two millimeter increments for a total adjustment of 20 millimeters, or yeah, 20 millimeters. So you can snap that back in. Very simple, very easy to use. The deep sea has a similar function on its class. So you see those little rivets again, once again, similar to the Submariner. However, in order to move it, as you can see, it can't move it inward or outward. You have to actually pull on the top of the class and then you'll be able to adjust however you need, either inward or outward as shown. Not only that, the deep sea actually has an additional, an additional extension system called a flip lock extension which is right here and this is actually these little flat links open up uh, to allow for more uh, comfort on the wrist when for divers who are looking to adjust to the size of their wetsuit that's the wetsuit sits around the wrist and adds a little bit more millimeter increments onto the wrist so you can adjust for that and have more comfortability on the wrist now let's go ahead and jump onto the movements so the movement of the submariner is housed in a simple oyster case backing for the deep seas housing in a larger oyster case backing with the Sea Dweller Deep Sea name with the Rolex logo, uh, Rolex logo crown engraved onto the back of that case back with a nice satin finish, whereas the uh, Submariner has a high polish instead on the back of the case. The movements are, the movements are different. Um, so the Submariner runs a 3130 movement, which is Rolex's in-house made per per uh, perpetual mechanical self-winding movement. It has a precision of minus two plus two seconds a day, which is within Swiss specs. Uh, it has the oscillator is a paramagnetic blue perichrome hairspring, which allows for additional resistance against magnetism. And it has a power reserve of 48 hours, meaning you could put this watch out on a Friday evening, pick it back up on a Sunday afternoon, and be keeping time just fine. But this movement is similar to just the 3135 movement, which is the uh, addition of the complication of the date movement. So those are those two are similar uh, To each other. So it's very simple tried and tested movement for over 10 20 years or so um, But the deep sea comes in now the newly updated deep sea actually used to run that 3135 movement Which is this similar to the no date submariner's 3130 movement just uh, with a date complication so they've actually went from that 3135 to the 3235, which is also a perpetual mechanical self-winding movement, is in-house made by Rolex still. It has the precision of minus two plus two seconds a day. Uh, however, the testing for it is more strenuous now as Rolex decided to uh, add another step into the testing process. So originally for like the 31, 31, 3130 or 35, 3135 movement, they used to test the movement outside of the watch and then put, put the movement into the watch once it was ready and uh, tested. But now for the 31, uh, 32, 35, they they test the movement outside of the watch and then they put the movement into the watch and do another test to make sure it's within those Swiss specs. So extra testing protocols for that, uh, meaning a more, a even more reliable movement. Uh, additionally, they, this watch still has the perpetual mechanical, um, sorry, the paramagnetic blue paracrum hairspring, which is what adds additional resistance against magnetism and helps keep them in the minus two plus two seconds a day. But a, they've also added two additional things that are in-house made. One of them is the Kronergy escapement. So it's a skeletonized escapement wheel that's made of a nickel phosphorus. So nickel phosphorus helps it stay uh, anti-magnetic while also 
uh, reducing the inertia of the of the escapement so it doesn't have a so it keeps it within that uh, precision of that minus two plus two seconds a day. Not only that, it also helps with the energy efficiency of the watch. So the power reserve actually bumps up from a 48 hours to a 70 hour power reserve. I Meaning you can put this watch out on a Friday evening, pick it back up on a Monday afternoon, and it'll be keeping time just fine. But they actually did even more and they replaced the industry standard KLEF shock absorbers that they used to use with the uh, in-house made Paraflex shock absorbers, which they claim, which Rolex claims to absorb 50% more shocks in uh, the, the KIF shock absorbers. All right, so let's go ahead and get these watches on my wrist. You can take a look at this. So once again, locate that flip block. Folding, lock down, and there is the no date Submariner. Just one of Rolex's classic Submariner, classic pieces, the Submariner, either date, no date. It just absolutely looks gorgeous, very beautiful. The ceramic, the ceramic bezel really adds to the face of the watch, having a nicer shine to it while not sacrificing durability of the watch. So the face of the watch is more eye-catching and appealing. That satin finish all throughout helps keep the watch nice and durable, hides any scratches or scuffs that you may find, that you may get, uh, get in the future. Um, but overall, very beautiful watch. There it is, 12, 12 and a half millimeters off the wrist. You can see it doesn't sit very high off the wrist. So now let me show you the deep seat now. So once again, that lock open, folding. Okay, and there we are, there's a deep seat. So one thing I wanna mention right off the bat, look at that, sits very high off the wrist at 17.7 millimeters. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of that. So this, this will not fit into cuffs, just cuffs very nicely, but it makes much more of a bolder statement as it is a larger watch. See, it's a very beautiful watch overall. So if you're interested in these models for the lowest possible price, check out our website at jazztime.com. We have the lowest prices guaranteed. We offer a one-year warranty. And if you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe below. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys soon. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in jazztime, plus the brand, model, and the details you're interested in, and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.